Hello friends, the Rhombus R3 Nova is out and I wanted to provide a review and a supplement to my original R1 Nova review. The R3 is an elongated shape versus the hybrid R1, but Rhombus also has made some adjustments to the carbon edge grid that's improved performance for both the R3 and R1. So let's dive in and have a look. The R3 Nova costs $180 and you can take $20 off with the code John Q. Rhombus paddles in general come in three shapes. The R1, which is a hybrid shape with a curved top, the R2, an oval, and the R3, which is a rectangular elongated shape. The Nova R3 has a similar shape to other rectangular elongated paddles such as the Carbon 1X, Bread and Butter Filth, and Legacy Pro. It's longer and narrower than the standard square paddles, and it has a 5.5 inch handle, which provides room for two-handed backhands. Also, the neck tapers up instead of flaring out, so you can get an extra half an inch or more on the handle by overwrapping it up to the USAP stamp. Thickness is the standard 16 millimeters. The grip circumference is also standard, and the handle has a solid feel with an octagonal shape. The swing weight of the R3 Nova is 121, falling at the 73rd percentile in my paddle database. This is a lighter swing weight than the R3 Pulsar, which is up around 125, and is very noticeable when comparing these two paddles side by side. More on that later. The lighter swing weight of the R3 Nova will feel the same as the Gearbox Pro Power Elongated, Bread and Butter Filth, and Diadem Edge 18K. The R3 Nova's twist weight is 6.1, falling at the 40th percentile. The twist weight correlates with the width of the sweet spot from side to side on the paddle, which is about right for this paddle, which seems to have a longer but slightly more narrow sweet spot than what you see on square paddles. But being thermoformed, the sweet spot overall on the Nova is larger than Gen 1 paddles. I covered the unique engineering of Nova paddles in my review of the R1, so check that out if you want details on the edge grid that helps protect against delamination and core corruption. Rhombus did make a change to the original edge grid though, which has some positive effects on performance. The angle and density of the carbon fiber grid were adjusted with the goal of making the stiffness of the grid fluctuate according to the power of the shot. So theoretically, the grid stays soft for dinks and lighter shots and stiffens up for harder power shots. This is a difficult theory to test objectively, but results from my power testing do look promising. The newly formulated R3 Nova showed improved power compared to the prototype it was sent earlier in the year. Average serve speed gained four tenths of a point over the prototype, coming in at 55.6 miles per hour, placing it at the 80th percentile for legal paddles. Coincidentally, this is several spots higher than the R3 Pulsar, which got 54.0 miles per hour for average serve speed. And I got this measurement three months ago for the R3 Pulsar, so I started wondering if my serve technique had maybe improved since then, and if maybe my numbers had been creeping up on my charts. So I went back and retested the Pulsar and got nearly exactly the same average, 54.1 miles per hour this time. So that at least gives me some confidence that there is a notable power increase for the Nova. Average punch volley speed showed significant improvement, gaining 1.3 points over the prototype, coming in at 34.8 miles per hour, placing it at the 60th percentile for pop. That means the R3 Nova has above average pop for things like punch volleys, flicks, and other attacks using short strokes at the kitchen or transition zone. My spin test results for the R3 Nova came in at 1,732 RPM on average, which is nearly identical to the results I got for the R1 Nova. It's curious to me that these paddles get slightly lower spin than the Pulsars, which came in around 1900 RPM, because they're all using the same texture, that fine peel ply design popularized by Legacy. Rhombus has chosen to use this texture exclusively for the Pulsar and Nova lines, given feedback from their users and the X-Pro program. I do appreciate that Rhombus is considering user feedback, and I realize that this particular peel ply texture is popular, but personally I prefer the coarser peel ply design used by brands such as Carbon, Electrum, Diadem, Pickleball Apes, and now Gearbox. If you look at all the best performing paddles for spin on my chart, they're all using this coarser peel ply design. 
The legacy style peel ply design usually maxes out around 2000 RPM and anything above 2200 RPM is exclusively in the domain of the coarser peel ply in my testing. Regardless, the Nova paddles do get good spin in the 1700 to 1800 RPM range, just not top tier. The balance point for the R3 Nova, which is the paddle's center of mass as measured from the bottom of the handle is 24.4 centimeters or 9.6 inches. This location is well balanced, so the paddle doesn't feel too head heavy or head light. Earlier this year when the Rhombus R3 Pulsar was my paddle of choice, one of the things I really enjoyed about it was the plush muted feel, which helped me with my soft game at a time when that was more appealing to me than power. The R3 Nova feels a bit crisper with less of a muted response, but with that comes more pop and power. When I play tested the R3 Nova, I also brought the R3 Pulsar and played with those two side by side so I could make a direct comparison. The biggest difference I could notice was the lighter swing weight of the Nova, resulting in better hand speed. The Nova's better overall power was also noticeable, so taking big swings on serves and drives generated more velocity on the ball, and punch volleys and speed ups came off hotter on the Nova than the Pulsar. Even though the face of the Nova is not as plush as the Pulsar, I'd say that the R3 Nova is still on the softer side as far as thermoformed paddles go. It's definitely less crisp than the 6.0 Double Black Diamond or Legacy Pro, for example. And just to clarify, there's no better choice in this spectrum between plush versus stiff paddle faces. It's just a matter of preference. But in general, a more plush feel helps with the soft game and a stiffer feel provides more pop and responsiveness. In terms of Rhombus's claim that the new edge grid in the Nova makes it play plush with lighter shots but stiffens up on hard shots, there did seem to be a subtle trend in those directions. The extra pop and power are definitely noticeable with faster swings, and I didn't have any problem with the soft game on this paddle. I found it to be good at resets, even playing against my friend who's using the new Gearbox Pro Power Paddle. That being said, I do have a couple of friends who played with this paddle briefly, and they mentioned getting some unwanted pop-ups. I think this was the result of the good pop that this paddle provides and not having enough time to dial in things like grip pressure and swing path. I also recruited some friends to test the R1 and R3 Novas back in August when the R1 was released. I put some of that footage in the R1 review, but here are some thoughts from Ben Lampert, who played with the R3 Nova that day. And to clarify, this was the prototype of the R3 before the adjustment in the edge grid. Yeah. And then the R3, I think I slightly prefer the R3, um, just the shape a little bit. I think it has a little bit more pop on those short volleys. Um, power, similar, um, again, to the R1, similar to the Legacy. I'd say more control, and I think maybe even more spin on um, Legacy Pro. Um, I think I will be switching here as soon as this one becomes available. I think I'll lean towards the R3 uh, moving forward. And again, yeah, the pop had some good volleys. Um, the pop is right there. But what I, what I, I, oh, the weight, I really enjoy it. I like the weight because I feel like it's a little bit lighter than what I've used and I can get a little more handsy, quick hands and generate a little bit more um, hand speed. Um, so I think that'll help on the, on the, um, the nets and the, um, kind of the firefights and doubles. And so I like a little bit lighter paddle. Extra. Rhombus continues to make improvements in its paddle line, and this newest adjustment in the edge grid for the Nova series is no exception. I'd say that the newest version of the Nova is an upgrade over the Pulsar in terms of both performance and durability. The theory and testing of the edge grid system used in the Nova eliminates most of my concerns about delamination, disbonding, and core corruption. And the new adjustments to the edge grid give the Nova an upgrade in power and pop while retaining a good amount of control. Rhombus also sent me an upgraded R1 Nova, and it also had the same performance perks, more power and pop with a slightly stiffer face, but still manageable control. And the reduced swing weight is a welcome improvement on the R3 Nova compared to the Pulsar. The increased hand speed and maneuverability were very noticeable when comparing these two side by side. And there's another upgrade to the R3 Nova that shouldn't be overlooked. The new edge guard matching the light blue and the logo gradient is a really nice touch. To me, this is easily the best looking paddle that Rhombus has released. 
This paddle will appeal to people in the elongated paddle market who want the benefits of a thermoformed paddle, such as increased power and a larger sweet spot, without the worry about delamination and core corruption. It also finds a good spot on the power control spectrum for people wanting above average power without sacrificing too much in the soft game. If the R3 Nova fits the bill for you, you can take $20 off the price, bringing the total down to $160 by using the code JOHNQ at checkout. And at this price, the R3 Nova is a really good deal at more than $100 cheaper than the most expensive paddles on the market today. As always, thanks for watching and your likes and comments always help out this channel with YouTube's algorithm. And if you wanna dive deeper into the edge grid on the Nova and the durability testing that Rhombus performed, have a look at my review of the R1 Nova. Also, if you haven't seen it yet, I've created a new website and put all of my paddle metrics on a database that you can sort and search. I've also just published a ball database that compares the hardness, rebound, and other metrics for most of the ball brands out there. You can check all of that out at johnqpickleball.com.